Hello everyone, Merry Christmas and welcome to the Union Pacific Railroad Evanston Subdivision, an N-Scale inspired HO layout. I do want to wish everyone a very, very Merry Christmas. I hope your year has been great and that uh, your Christmas season and your upcoming Christmas is a blessed one. Thanks so much for joining me on this video. You may be wondering what I've been doing this past week. Well, you're looking at what I've been doing. I've been running trains. I have just over 50 feet of main line done, plus the staging yards. And so I have been spending quite a bit of time just running the trains back and forth. Uh, 54 feet is not that long when you consider the length of the trains I'm running, but it still is uh, fun to uh, uh, have the trains go back and forth. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of that, but I have also been working on the railroad. And one of the things I'm going to be sharing today is what I've been doing this past week, which has been uh, getting ready for the next section of the Union Pacific Railroad. And it's going to be focusing on the wholesome cement area. So this is what I have all done to this point. The main line done through the Taggart tunnels and all the way through Devil's Slide. And now this is the next section I'm going to be working on. This is going to be the wholesome cement area, which is just really close to Devil's Slide. And as you can see, I do have the framing done already. And I did put some a board up there for a, a PM4 a power management for by Digitrax, and then also a BDL 168. And um, I had to run the power from the main uh, command station here. Now this orange plug there is the power. All of these are connected to the outlet there on the right with the four plugs. That's the train outlet that's powered through a switch so I can turn everything on and off. And so these two cables I don't have the yellow hooked up yet, but that's a 12 gauge uh, wire, and that's going to be the power, A and B power, that's going to run all the way to a new power manager. And then the power manager will run two uh, BDL 16s, which will run detected power to 16 different sections. So I have not only the power from the command station, but also um, power for the um, power supplies. So the red extension cord is connected to that outlet there, which I'm going to uh, label as train only. I don't want to plug my, po my power saw into there or something like that. And then uh, we're going to run uh, some... Uh, power, detected power, 16 sections from that power. There's going to be a second one that's going to be for the upper level. So um, I'm a, I got to this point that uh, when I got done framing, I did uh, put up some sheetrock on the top half as what usual and what I've been doing. And I also mudded it. And you can see it's still kind of wet. And I'm going to be uh, painting the ceiling there pretty soon. So here I am uh, with everything covered up so I can spray the ceiling. So I have the staging yard covered up and all my shelves covered up. Uh, the t desk and chair covered up. Took down the lights. You can see the cords hanging down. I left those up. But it took down all the lights, and they were very easy to take down. The track lighting just unplugged from the track, and the um, shop light LEDs just kind of came off very easily from their little brackets that hold them in. They even covered the window there, although I really didn't need to. There's some stuff, so uh, some stuff stored by my daughter here. Definitely going to have to cover that up before I start painting. I did not cover all the tracks. I figured there's no way the spray is going to go.
go that far. Spraying from here. Don't think it's going to make it all the way over to there. At least I'm hoping it would not. So everything's ready for painting. And I'm just doing all this. over to uh, not all the way to the end just to the end of the wall that's that I just got done sheetrocking now all the spraying of the ceiling and the walls too has been using this Graco Magnum uh, airless spray painter and you can see all my setup here there's five gallons of white paint Everything's ready to go, hopefully. So the two buckets there are basically used for cleaning it out. This is the spray gun, and I got the extender, too, to save on my arms, since I've, I'm mostly doing sealing. So the bucket and the can there are for uh, priming it to get started and also to flush it out with water when I'm done. And so here you see me painting the ceiling with my Graco Power Painter, Airless Power Painter. And you can hear the, uh, the pump uh, charging back up every once in a while. As I'm spraying, it's releasing the pressure and it's constantly uh, engaging to pump it up. Here I'm kind of fast forwarding here so you can kind of see how things go. It's got kind of a tedious process. It took me about two hours to do all this and it took all five gallons. It, uh, even though it's not uh, that much uh, surface or that much area, it's a lot of surface because you have to do both sides of the, of the joist and it also uh, absorbs the paint pretty well. So five gallons to do this ceiling here and then the wall. I also did the the beam there. So I stopped there. I'm going to do just a couple more sections. I have quite a, almost, I would say, three-fourths of it done, if not more, maybe 80% done. I have all that done in that area here. I have it done by the staging yards. Looks pretty good, I have to say. You may be wondering why I'm going with uh, spraying the ceiling instead of going with a drop ceiling or some other method. Uh, a couple reasons. Uh, one is cost. It's much less expensive. It does take a ton of paint. I think I've gone through over 15 gallons so far and I'm probably going to be over 20 gallons by the time I'm done. But each uh, five gallon uh, container only takes up about, um, it's only $69, $70. Um, I showed you the shelves there because I'm going to be moving the shelves a little bit still um, to kind of make room for the peninsula. Well, we'll get more of that when we get to that point. So this is what I have left to do yet. It'll probably take less than five gallons to do that little section. And then there's a section down at the end there. So I think to finish it, it's going to take another five gallons, maybe a little bit more. This is the first section of ceiling that I did when I started the staging yard. As you notice, I also put in some lights in this area. So the only place I have left to do lights is down in this section here where Patrick Mahomes is keeping guard. And this is going to be where the Evanston yard is. Right there, and then where the computer is, is where the helix is going to be. So we'll get to that at some point in time. So things look, look pretty good, I have to say. I'm pretty happy with the way everything has turned out. I still need to think of some solution for the floor. I did have somebody come in to uh, give me a quote on carpeting. It would be $8,000 to carpet the basement. So I'm not doing that. Uh, you may have noticed I like to do the finishing of the basement as uh, 
less least expensive as possible. I'm not sure if that's correct grammar, but um, well, here's I'm also going to start uh, some signaling. By the way, I did put in the first signaling thing, and I did put in another um, Digitrax plug-in there. So the signaling is going to handle that uh, control point over there. And it's also going to do a control point all the way over here. This is the next section I'm going to be working on. And um, anyway, I, I try to go as least expensive as possible for the finishing so I can have as much money left over to invest in the actual layout. Um, so the cost was one reason why I painted the ceiling. Uh, we're going to see some trains running. That's what this is all about, right? But uh, the cost is one thing that uh, I really wanted to paint the ceiling instead of doing something else. And the other, uh, another reason is I didn't want to do a drop ceiling because it, I wanted the ceiling to be as high as possible. So the just painting the ceiling still gives me as much room overhead, and so it just makes it look like a bigger space. I think if I put in a drop ceiling, I would lose at least six, probably a full foot of uh, space for the drop ceiling um, so I just think it looks a lot better um, with this way uh, as far as a floor goes I'm not gonna carpet it it's gonna cost eight thousand um, dollars so I'll probably go with some kind of interlocking uh, tiles uh, floor tiles that's kind of where I'm leaning right now Probably we'll get some and see how it looks and how it feels. I did have some in Georgia that worked out pretty good. But I'll probably get something a little bit nicer than what I had in Georgia. But I think I can do that for under a dollar a square foot. Whereas the uh, carpeting was like $4 a square foot, which I thought was way too expensive. So anyway, here we have some trains running. This is a couple of SD70s by Athern, pulling the crude oil tank car. We're doing the drone method this time as it pulls out of the staging yards and goes through the first control point. Hopefully before too long we'll have those signals lit up. With something to look forward to, I'm going to start connecting up the signals so we can look forward to uh, seeing some working signals there at that control point. The next section I'm going to be doing uh, by Wholesome Cement, it's uh, 20 foot long by almost 3 feet wide, and it's going to have another control point, so there'll be some more signals there as well. Um, so, good, a chance to look forward to some signal action going on. And then also, with uh, if I have the signal uh, signals hooked up, I should be able to do some pretty easy testing of my end scale signals. So uh, I'll be able to put those up for sale, hopefully before too long. I know I've been talking about that for a long time and haven't uh, got it done. But and one thing I really love about um, double track mainline is two trains running in opposite directions. So I've been able to do that now. Here we have uh, the crew oil tank car passing a manifest train pulled by. Uh, a Tier 4 Jeevo and a CN Jeevo ES44. I just love watching two trains going in opposite directions on a double track mainline. And actually, it's pretty cool watching them go in the same direction, too, I must add. So, this layout, when I get it, the trackage done all the way through both levels and everything. It's going to be over, like almost 400 linear feet long for just the main line. So we'll be able to run probably four trains at a time, and we'll be able to run some DPU units, which you see here. So I really, uh, I'm hoping to do um, quite a few uh, DPU units. I find that the biggest challenge with the DPU units is the couplers. Uh, when you have a 
the DPU is pushing, there's always some place in the train where the, there's some slack action going on. And if the couplers aren't um, operating perfectly, that slack, jack, that slack action will cause some uh, uncoupling, and then you have them, you know, the two trains separating. Have to figure out how to get that uh, light on. I know how, I just need to quite get it. Here we have another uh, DPU going. This is a mid train DPU, a uh, Norfolk Southern Jeebo ES44. Pulling the rest of the train. And we're going to have to hurry over to the front of this train because we're almost to the end. So in a couple weeks we'll have uh, the main line extended another you know, 22 feet or so. This is where it ends at this point at Devil Slide. So let's go ahead and watch the other train, the westbound train, head into the staging yards. Helped along by a Norfolk Southern DPU. I'd be curious to know if they do DPUs with off-road uh, engines. I'm sure they probably do, but I'd be curious to know if that's actually the case. Well, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe uh, to the video. I noticed only about 50% of the people who watch the videos are subscribers. If you've been watching, please subscribe. It really helps uh, tremendously. Uh, helps me with my channel. So make sure you do that. Leave a comment, too. That also is cool. I like to respond. I try to respond to all of them in some way or another. Uh, so leave some comments. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And make sure that you uh, like the video as well. I hope you have a very, very Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.